Welcome to Durham University Kitchen. I'm Professor Daniel Newman and today I'm here with my colleagues Giles and Amanda. Today we're going to make a medieval sweet called Zulabia or Zalabia. It's still around today, in fact it's still very popular and it's eaten usually during Ramadan. And so we start with the yeast. We're just going to put one sachet in this mixing bowl. Here I have three cups of lukewarm water. The recipe talks about soaking the yeast. So I'm just stirring this, dissolving uh, the yeast. Is this a recipe that's specific to Muslim Spain or is it one that's more generic across well, the that's Islamic? Okay? Actually, the earliest recipe for the Zulabiya goes back to Abbasid times. So we're talking 9th, 10th centuries. And so it moved presumably from uh, Baghdad to the west very popular um, and indeed the fritter variety is now more popular in North Africa mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than it is in the East. The recipe then traveled East because in Indian cuisine of course there's a jalebi which is also the fritter. What do we think the difference is between a fritter and a donut? Excellent question. I'm actually using the fritter in a rather loose and inaccurate uh, term because fritter, strictly speaking, me implies that you have fruit of some sort, which is in a batter. A donut is simply fried dough. But so I'm using fritter, although we don't have any fruit that we, we put in there. The descriptions of the end product are often very brief and vague. So for instance, here, the only um, help you get from the recipe is that you end up with something that is like curdled milk. Uh, no, that's not appetizing <laughs> at all. And so the, the, the final product, the batter should be, as the author tells us, not too light, i.e. Mm. not too runny, and not too thick. Yep. But of course, that, uh, that doesn't really help you. And so there's a lot of trial and error, don't you find? Yes, it's very subjective. One person's not too thick, not too light is not another person's not exactly. too thick, not too light. Exactly. One that I've often thought about is that I'm imagining that perhaps, thinking that it's written for fellow chefs, that perhaps the authors would, on purpose, leave out exact measures because they wouldn't want to betray their their trade secrets. And so we have our wonderful flour. We have our water in which the yeast has dissolved. Now I'm going to mix that. And of course, it's time to make our batter. Eat your heart out, J.B. Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. How about that? I'm going to deep fry the uh, fritters in olive oil. Now, um, in the medieval Arab tradition, we can already see the emergence of regional cuisines. Mm. And so it's no surprise that I'm using olive oil since it's an Andalusian recipe. In the East, they would traditionally have used something called sheep's tail fat which Sounds was very popular. <laughs> uh, yes, it's a particular type of sheep that has a very fatty tail. I've seen images of those, yeah. actually. Yeah. There's some very funny images of travelers, and you even have one particularly funny one where the, the sheep has a little trolley to carry its tail, <laughs> which is very impressive and very big. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that, that yields a lot, of, a lot of fat. In the Muslim West, so North Africa and uh, Muslim Spain, El Andalus, um, the olive oil was, of course, king. Uh, honey is mentioned several times in the Quran. Mm. Uh, in paradise, there would be rivers uh, of strained honey. One of the sayings of the prophet is that the believer only needs two things on this earth, the Quran and honey. Mm -hmm. Let me just pour this in. In terms of the measure, so there's either nothing or there's uh, generic ones, they're very f fond of those, a handful, yeah. a bit, a lot, yeah. not too much, <laughs> enough to taste it. Hmm. And then the third category are those where you have, for each part of X, use three parts yeah. of Y. So does honey feature much in early American cuisine? 
or mm. amongst the First Nations? Or? No, this is one of these many amazing, interesting early American food history facts. So bees were first introduced to the Americas in the 17th century. We have evidence that they were brought over to Virginia in 1622. So prior to that moment, honey was not used as a sweetener in early America. Indigenous and native people have a long tradition through to today of using maple sugar as a sweetener. Christopher Columbus is actually the first one to introduce sugarcane to the Americas. He brings it on his third voyage. And sugarcane becomes exceptionally popular in the Americas in the sense that it grows very, very well and very rapidly. And in the Americas, you see the growth of the sugar trade simultaneous with the growth of the trade in enslaved people because sugarcane is so labor intensive yeah. and so dangerous to produce cane sugar. Um, that those two things really go hand in hand in the Americas. But it does, you know, sugar explodes in the 17th and 18th centuries in particular um, as it takes over really American and European diets as well. In medieval Europe, Giles, what is the position on honey and sugar? Fairly, fairly similar. So um, you find earlier recipes, so we have some from the 12th century, the, the only natural sweetener there is honey. That's closer to Roman traditions. Um, but as soon as you get into the late 13th and 14th centuries, where the bulk of our collections come from, um, you're watching cane sugar um, yeah. become more and more popular. Um, but it has the same distinction as well with sugar being prescribed in the medical texts and the, yeah. and the regimens. So, so it's not that honey disappears, but sugar does, does take over as yeah. the sweetener. I've got a special treat for you today. I'm going to dye the batter with saffron, oh. freshly ground saffron, to give it really that golden appearance, uh, which is very, very spectacular. So we'll have both the plain and saffron dyed fritters today. Mm. And in the European tradition, I think saffron also remained very popular, did it not? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, 14th century recipes onwards in the English tradition as well as others, it's very common. And, and what kind of dishes was it used to it's used primarily? In, it's used in pies, it's used in potages. Um, so I think it's that balance of, of colour, and, but it's also got that strange, astringent taste. Right, and so now the honey's ready. It's amazing. Beautiful. Uh, you mm. need enough olive oil in short to deep fry the fritters. I love knowing exactly how popular frying things in oil has been for centuries. <laughs> and this method goes back to the earliest recipe from uh, the 9th, 10th century. And the Andalusian recipe that I'm using the, simply mentions using a thimble with a hole uh, uh, punched in it. Yeah. Um, here we have coconut, which has the added advantage, of course, that you can regulate the amount of batter that you uh, put in. But as I said, I'm going to make plain ones, plain white ones, as well as some with saffron. Also remember, it's used for dyeing, not just food, but other things. But with saffron, you also need to bloom it. How do we bloom it? Simply by adding water. So I'm going to set that aside. But the more saffron, the more, the more red. Yes, indeed so. The oil has to come to a slight shimmer, mm. but you don't want it to be on, as we say, a rolling boil. Okay, I think we can give it a whirl. Okay, here we go. Wow. Here we go. That's more like it. Yep. Okay, here we go. And we have our little Stick again. Oh, oh, mama. There we go. They would have had people to tidy up after them, of course. <laughs> you mean you don't? <laughs> I think that's us. Uh. <laughs> okay, so now we've done the plain ones. We have our wonderful saffron, if you remember, pounded and bloomed. And we're just going to pour that all in. This is where the magic happens. Swirls of golden beauty. And here it is in the coconut. As you can see, the, the colors quite extraordinary here. That golden 
color and and the, the taste because you mentioned amanda that you know taste of saffron quite strong mm. bitter but um the combination of that with the honey is absolutely spectacular and you really get nothing but the best from the from the saffron okay there you have it 13th century zulabia fritters both plain and with saffron and of course uh now it's time for the big moment, and I'd like your honest opinion. Uh, if it's not good, we'll just edit it out. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Well, they have a All beautiful right. color, and they're so crispy. Mm. Amazing. Delicious, Daniel. It's such an excellent balance between the honey and then the delicious fried oil taste yeah. from the olive oil. I see what you mean about the saffron and the honey. Mm -hmm. It really balances yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. uh, really ties it uh, ties mm. it together. Thank you so much for joining us at the Durham University Kitchen. Myself, Daniel Newman, my colleagues Giles and Amanda, and looking forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you very much. Mm.